today is Tuesday, September 17th. Let's go ahead and reveal your memory scripture for this week. It comes out of the book of Psalms 118 verse 1 and it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. Psalms 118 1 again, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. Today's Bible lesson, we continue to talk about Moses and how he, remember he was adopted by the princess, Pharaoh's daughter. So Moses grew up in the palace. Moses knew he was a Hebrew and he wanted to help his people. He knew that his people were still slaves in Egypt. And so he had a great desire in him to help his people out and to do something for his people. So one day he went to go and check on his people and he saw one of the taskmasters beating one of the Hebrews and Moses wanted to defend the um, the Hebrew and he ended up killing the taskmaster which wasn't right for him to do that but he did and um, he thought nobody saw and so he hid the taskmaster's body thinking that um, he would have been able to get away with it so the next day he goes to check on his people again and this time he sees two Hebrews fighting one another. And so Moses goes up to them and tries to tell them to stop fighting. And they're like, who are you? Are you going to kill us like you killed the taskmaster? So word got out that Moses had actually killed this taskmaster. And Pharaoh ended up finding out about it. And Pharaoh uh, wanted to arrest and execute Moses. So Moses had to flee Egypt. He had to leave um and he ended up in Midian so he really wanted to help his people out which was good because we should want to help others but it was just the way he went about trying to help them that was wrong by killing the taskmaster and so um now he's in Midian um and he met a man named Jethro he became a shepherd in Midian he also got married and had two sons as well uh but uh Moses was in Midian you know, he wanted to help his people in Egypt, but now he's in Midian and he stayed in Midian for 40 years, you know, being a shepherd there. And so he was now 80 years old at this time and he just felt like it was over. You know, God wouldn't be able to use him. He was too old. He messed up. But Moses didn't know that God does everything at a certain time. And though we may feel like God will never do something or it will never come together. God always comes at the perfect time. And so in the land of Egypt, the people, a new Pharaoh had came on the throne and this Pharaoh treated the people worse, treated the Hebrews worse than before. And so they cried out to the Lord. They wanted deliverance and God heard their cry and God remembered his promise that he gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember about the land and his descendants. And so God was ready to deliver his people and he had the perfect person that he would use to deliver the people and that would be Moses. So that's where we're going to pick up today with our Bible lesson. One day as Moses was uh, with his flock in the desert near Mount Sinai, he noticed something strange afar off. He saw a bush and it was on fire, but it wasn't burning up. So usually when things catch on fire, it starts to turn black because it's, you know, the fire is burning it. But the bush was on fire, but it's like the fire was just resting on the bush. The bush was still green, like it wasn't even burning up. So Moses went closer to it to kind of see what exactly it was because he wasn't understanding why the bush wasn't burning up. And then a voice spoke from the burning bush and called his name and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses looked around, but he's like, okay, I don't see anybody. What is going on? Um, someone was there because they called his name. And this whoever it was knew who he was by saying his actual name. So Moses said, here I am. And the voice said, don't come any closer. Take off your shoes for you are standing on holy ground. Now, when Moses heard this, he knew that it had to be God who had come to speak to him because the Lord is telling him, don't come closer. You're on holy God, a holy ground. We know that God is the only holy God, the perfect God. And so when he told Moses this, Moses knew that it was the Lord God in heaven who uh, was speaking to him. So Moses immediately took off his shoes and bowed his head in reverence to the Lord. And so... Um, Moses stood there with his shoes off and he listened and God began to speak. Now, God is not 
uh, fire. This is not what God looks like. One thing about the Lord, and we will see this throughout this lesson, God can appear in different ways. So he's appearing through this burning bush. He's speaking through this burning bush. And then whenever we get to the Hebrews and when God will appear to them, um, he will do it a different way. And so God is not any of this. It's just being that we are sinful humans, sinful people, we cannot behold his holy glory. And so um, so that's why God, if he speaks to us, he may appear, especially like with Moses, he appeared in the burning bush. And so um, just keep that in mind. God is not a burning bush. OK, uh, that's just how God chose to appear to Moses. And so uh, God began to speak to Moses and he told Moses, he said, I am the God of your forefathers, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt and I have heard their cry for help. Now I have come to free them from their slavery and to bring them to a large and rich land, the land of Canaan. And if you remember, the land of Canaan is the promised land. So God is speaking to Moses and God is telling Moses that he is ready to deliver his people from the land of Egypt. God was ready to uh, free them from the slavery that they were going through in Egypt. And God was ready to bring them back to their land, the land that they belonged in, the promised land. So Moses listened and I'm sure his heart was touched because remember, Moses had a desire to help his people. So when he's hearing God say that he is ready to deliver his people, I'm sure Moses is like excited and he's like, man, God is finally ready to free the people. And so he was excited about that. Right. And so I'm sure Moses also was thinking, well, why is the Lord telling me this? Right. And so God told Moses, he said, I want you, Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let you lead my people out of Egypt. And Moses is like, what? So God was telling Moses all of this because God wanted Moses to be the one to lead the people back to, to lead the people out of Egypt and back into the promised land. And so Moses, though, when God said this, his immediate response was a no. He was like, no, no, I, I can't go. You know, he thinks he's too old now. He's like, yeah, 40 years ago when I was in Egypt, I uh, wanted to help my people, but it's it's too late. I'm a shepherd. I, yeah, I messed up my chances. Moses didn't understand why the Lord had chosen him. So he asked the Lord, he says, OK, if I do go, when I come to the children of Israel and I tell them that the God of their fathers has sent me and they say, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And Moses was asking this because he was like, okay, I'm going to go to the people. These people don't even know who I am. And I'm going to go and tell them that God appeared to me and told me to lead you out of Egypt. And when they say, who is he? What is his name? He says, Lord, what should I tell them? And so God answered to Moses and says, tell them that I am that I am. God was telling Moses that he is the one, the one without the beginning and an end. He is before all things. He is the great and mighty God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That's why he said, I am. Before God, there was nothing. So he says, I am. I always was. And so he says, that's who you're going to tell the people that I am. And so God also told Moses, he says, listen, I'm going to be with you. He says, not just that, I will touch the hearts of the people and of Pharaoh by working mighty miracles. He said, they will be convinced after seeing my power and my great signs and wonders. He, and so God told Moses, he says, tell them that I am, but I'm also going to do miracles that they will see and they will know that I am the Lord God and that I sent you, Moses, to them. So the Lord wanted to show Moses the signs and the, the miracles that he would do to prove um, to Moses and the people that he was sent by God. And so God said, what do you have in your hand, Moses? And Moses said, a rod. And so the Lord said, throw it on the ground. And Moses did. And when he threw his rod, a rod is like a stick, a huge stick that a shepherd would have. And so when Moses threw the rod on the ground, it became a snake. And he kind of was like, wow, like that was that was a miracle. The Lord said, throw the rod down. It became a snake. Then God said, take it by the tail. So Moses grabbed the snake by the tail. And when he picked it up, it turned back into a rod. And so that was a miracle. And the Lord said, when they see this, they're going to know that I'm the Lord God. And so now God told Moses something else. He says, reach your hand inside your robe next to your chest. And when he did, he took it out and it was white with leprosy. Remember, they're like, they're really dark skinned people. And so whenever Moses put his hand in his coat and he took it out and his hand was white, 
he's like whoa what is this and then it was like leprosy now leprosy is a disease that had no cure and everything so that's why i was also like wow and then god said put your hand back in and when he did and when he took it out his hand was like healed from the leprosy and back to normal his, his skin was dark again and so god said if they don't believe the first miracle with the rod they will definitely believe this miracle but guess what although god is showing moses all of this and god is telling moses i will be with you moses still is like lord i just i don't know i don't think i'm the person he was afraid moses said i'm, I'm slow of speech i don't speak well they you know pharaoh won't listen to me and all of that he says the israelites won't do what i tell them to do and so god just said you need not to be afraid moses i the mighty god will be with you and you need not to be concerned about being a good speaker and not knowing what to say god said i made your mouth i'm the i the lord made your mouth right so you can speak because i made your mouth to speak so don't you think that i could give you the words to say to pharaoh so god is just trying to um boost moses confidence as well and not just that but to um just give moses that assurance that god will be with him and so moses was like Ugh. he said lord please just send somebody else lord he says i i, I don't think i'm the one and so he just was like i i, I don't think so god and so God kept telling him, though, I will be with you, Moses. I will help you to speak and teach and give you the message I want you to deliver. I will be with you every step of the way. I, God would not call Moses to do this, to just leave Moses to do it by himself. No, of course, God would be with him. And sometimes, you know, God calls us to do great things and big things in life. And if our faith and, and trust is in him, whenever we go out to do that thing he wants us to do, then we have nothing to worry about because God will keep us and cover us every step of the way even if we face challenges god will help us to overcome that and we will see this throughout this entire lesson with moses him leading the people back to the promised land how god yes he was with them every single step of the way and god proved himself every time you know they ran across some kind of issue and so um moses though he just he's still not he's like lord i just i don't know if i'm the person and so he's like god just maybe you should send someone else to you know to speak and so god somewhat agreed and so aaron moses's brother was actually on the way to visit moses so if you remember whenever we did the when moses was put in the river he had his sister miriam and he had a younger brother aaron so aaron was actually at that moment on his way to visit moses in midian and so when moses is saying all of that the lord said okay I'm going to let your brother Aaron go with you and he will be your spokesperson. So Aaron would speak for Moses. He says, but you, Moses, will tell Aaron what I want said and be sure to take your rod along with you so that you can work the miracles that I have shown you. Aaron is coming here to look for you and he will be very happy when he finds you. And so Moses listened to God and he thought Aaron is coming. He hadn't seen his brother in 40 years. So, you know, this is all God. God already had it all planned out perfectly at this moment he appeared to moses aaron was on his way so you know god just knows everything so um after moses returned home he you know talked with his uh, father-in-law jethro and jethro you know was like moses could go with his blessing and so moses was now on his way back to egypt but this time he had a mission he was going to egypt to confront pharaoh and tell pharaoh to let god's people go and he was also there to tell the people that god was ready to free them from their bondage their slavery in egypt and so moses thought it was over 40 years he's been in midian he thought man this is it it's over but thank god that god doesn't think like us and god doesn't make his decisions because that's what we feel it should be but god does what he wants to do at his time and so um we should never give up on ourselves because god will never give up on us and so god can use us as at any time in our lives no matter what god can still use us to do his work and so that's our bible lesson today tomorrow we will get into um moses will actually go to pharaoh's palace and we'll talk about what pharaoh will say and moses will also go to the hebrews and we'll see what they have to say so that completes our bible lesson today